Good morning, everyone. Hello and welcome. Uh, welcome to another in Hello Culture In Conversation, a keynote address as part of, Birmingham, of BBC Digital Cities Virtual. Uh, my name's Helga Henry. Uh, it's my pleasure and privilege to um, host the uh, In Conversation with today. And uh, I've been lucky enough to be working on Hello Culture as a, as a host for many years now, really since its inception. And it's been a delight to be able to take you all into the virtual world as we can't all be together in, uh, in the real world, as it were. Um, and over the last few months, in fact, since September, uh, Hello Culture has been exploring the ways in which artists have continued to tell stories and create work during lockdown. Um, and over the last year, really, and we'll be on before that, but in particular during lockdown, there's been one artist whose Twitter account, uh, whose Facebook group has captured the mood of Brexit Britain and then also transitioned to the sort of uh, particular moments of a country in the siege of a pandemic and under lockdown. And I think if I if I told you two or three years ago that the person with their finger on the pulse of the public mood was somebody who took pieces of paper and cut and stuck them a bit digitally on paper, a collage artist that the the satirist of our time would be an artist working in collage. I think you'd be perhaps very surprised, and yet. I'm delighted today to, to welcome collage artist and satirist, Cold War Steve. Uh, hello and welcome. Hello, Helga. Hi. Good morning. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm a, I'm a big fan of your work. And, and actually more importantly, when I told my friends that this is what I was going to be doing, I, I have had uh, no small amounts of jealousy that you are a very <laughs> popular, uh, you're a very popular figure in the, in the zeitgeist. Um, Thank you. Uh, but before we get we get started, you and I, I'm just going to do a couple of bits of info for everybody. Um, it's fantastic to see a lot of our old friends here and uh, Hello Culture, some regulars. But if this is new and you're not, uh, you, this is your first Hello Culture experience, doubly welcome. But uh, you may not know that we also have closed captions available. And if you look at the bottom of your screen, you'll see the CC button. If you click on there, you'll either have an option to display scrolling subtitles like the news and uh, or you can view a false transcript uh, just to say also that this is being recorded so for those of your friends who didn't get tickets like the rush for the doors was like a you know black friday sales and uh, uh if, if you didn't get tickets or your friends didn't get tickets um this will be put put on um, online with subtitles uh, later on at the hello culture website so later on, you will be able to put your questions to Cold War Steve. So do put those in the chat. There's a little Q&A box. And uh, my friends, uh, curator Lara Ratnaraja, the person who's created Hello Culture, and our fantastic producer, Shirley Hunt Benson, will um, collate those, kind of gather them together, and we'll get through as many as we can. Uh, just a quick shout out as well to our producer, Gareth, who's making it all look great. and will be uh, responsible for queuing up the visuals to our conversation. And a massive thanks to Wendy, who uh, is, as I speak, I know, will be capturing everything and putting it in the co closed captions. Um, and I'm now going to make a type. She does an amazing job. And thank you, Wendy. Mm -hmm. um, so thanks so much for joining us um, on Hello Culture today. And it's really fabulous to have you here. Um, it's quite. I, 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 I think what I'll probably do is like make, let you kind of go through and, and just I'll maybe point, point out. So there we were, I guess, at the end of at the end of um, tw 2019, going into 2020, Brexit was upon us. You had somehow touched the nerve of the madness that sort of catapulted in 2016. Um, you were having lived in people's imaginations on their phones mostly and we'll talk about that a bit more yeah on their phones and on their instagram phones maybe on their laptops you were going to exhibit so that was how it was all going to start so you and and you so you me and cold war steve an international ex <clears throat> exhibition of the pe people maybe if we start there 
we yeah. can sort of catch back and forward. So, I mean, um, well, hello, everyone. Welcome to my uh, the corner of my kitchen where I spend my entire life at the moment. So, um, yeah, I mean, lockdown, because of the work I do, it, lockdown wouldn't have I mean, it would have affected me. I've, I've been doing this um, as a, as the day job, so to speak, since April 2019. So lockdown, before that, I worked in the probation service, so lockdown would have impacted that massively. But in terms of me actually creating the work I do, lockdown wouldn't have affected it all that much. Um, you know, I work on my own remotely. Yeah. I released everything digitally. So, um, <clears throat> but all my work primarily, I must say that, that the reason I started to do my work and the, and the reason that I continue to do it is, is was a coping mechanism. So my way of dealing with things that, that angered me or distressed yeah. me was to channel it into these, these works of art. So Brexit was massive and the, um, the idea was that 2020 was going to be a quiet news year and I was going to perhaps step back from Twitter a little bit um, and focus on other ventures. And one of those was, was, the You, Me and Cold War Steve exhibition, which um, my manager stroke partner stroke friend, Carl Gosling, um, we discussed, we wanted to do a big exhibition. Um, <coughs> or in the spirit of what we do, we didn't want to have a, a white wall gallery type thing in London. We wanted to, to get out there to the people basically. So mm. um, we decided that we'd release the images that were going to be in the exhibition, there's 23 of them, we were going to release them uh, free for people to download and display wherever they wanted. So they would be curators of their own uh, exhibition. And we had a fantastic response and, and everyone entered into the spirit of it. And we'd, we'd arranged, there was um, everything from, from repurposed libraries that had closed down to, to, to hairdressers and chip shops and an Ethiopian cafe in Reading and a mannequin graveyard and and these were all over the world we had we had uh exhibitions lined up in in the Falkland Islands and Bermuda and uh Sri Lanka <laughs> it's amazing really so yeah. um and this the, the image here is the last mm. one that I was going to do of Brexit so this was released on the 31st of January um Brexit day when um yeah. people wanted big Ben to bong Brexit in and all the rest of it although there was a transition period, but this was, right, this is Brexit, here they are, um, the usual yeah. wreck wrecking crew, yeah. um, dragging us back to um, a time when they were probably more happy. Um, well, I think you'll find that we took back control and finally gained sovereignty. That, yeah. yeah, so yeah. day one, I needed to get over it. Um, <laughs> yeah, you Ramona. <laughs> I needed to get over it, uh, <clears throat> which I was prepared to do you know that, that, that's right okay let's move on that's you know what people were saying ah uh, brexit now what are you going to do now and you know, one trick pony and i thought well you know the, the the same people are in power so i'm going to continue to hold them up to the light whatever they do is going to be probably uh a disaster little did i know that around the corner was a a, a global pandemic that was going to put um Put us into lockdown and, and with the exhibition uh was really disappointed obviously because everyone had gone to so much effort and lockdown it was due to start on the first of april and obviously lockdown came in in the march and we had to, to cancel that so thinking of what to do we um took the lead really from a lot of galleries that we noticed were, were, were doing virtual tours um yeah. we quite liked the idea of that so we did the you, me, and Coldwell Steve's International Interactive Pandemic Proof Exhibition of the People, <laughs> which is a yes. really snappy title there. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, so the exhibition was launched on the 1st of April and it was a virtual tour. And I think a link will come up of that so you can have a look. And yeah. again, it's not a virtual, it's not going around a gallery looking at the pictures, it's, it's going through the woods. So I put the pieces in the woods with kind of burnt out cars and settees and things like that, just to keep it, uh, keep it real. <laughs> yeah, Casey um, got Casey got a bit pastoral. Yeah, yeah. So, so we did that, and and, and obviously it doesn't um, it doesn't make up in any way the the disappointment in in the the actual exhibitions that people had got arranged and, and things like that. But um, this is what we had to do. So we released the, the this online, and and that it proved to be quite successful. But um, you know the actual physical 
exhibition, maybe we, we return to it at some point. Next slide, please. <laughs> thank, you, yes, thank you, yes, thank you, Mr. Whitty. <laughs> um, and another, uh, I mean, at the end of um, 2019, I was approached by um, Emily Beddoes uh, at Birmingham Museum and Art Gallery. Um, now, this is a gallery, obviously, that, that is close to my heart and somewhere that I've been going since I was five years old. Um, and they asked, they, they got in touch really just to, to see if there was any way we could maybe work together and do something and um and that was just mind-blowing really so i i came up with it was to support their their online resource that they've got so mm. most galleries that obviously they've got a, an extensive collection of artworks um that they've recorded judicially um but people weren't aware that that you could actually access these images um that were in the public domain because obviously the yeah. artists have been deceased for, for, for yeah. the adequate amount of time um so that was just a, it's just a treasure trove of, of yeah. uh, images that people can access and, and use and obviously the work that i do i was going to to have some fun with it and yeah, yeah, yeah. the main piece that i wanted to do was a, a i very much wanted to do a celebration of, of, of birmingham and i took the the background for, for this is called benny's babies by the way the background mm -hmm. is actually from a um, a Japan tray um, of, I think it's St. Martin's Church there in, in yeah, Birmingham yeah. in probably Georgian times, I would imagine. Um, and I've populated it with people that I think represent Birmingham at its best. You know, Birmingham, a, 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 a beautiful, creative, diverse, multicultural city. And I've, mm. I um, did it, you know, this was a, it was a painstaking, painstaking piece of work uh, researching and, and getting the images and everything and mm. and it was to be displayed in room 23 at the gallery which was definitely the peak of my yeah. career by far to have something on the walls of the gallery um, and, and, on, size, and, then, and then there was lockdown sorry so. yeah. um, um, but in terms of size again we're talking about going from something sort of this size so yeah. the size of that piece is when it was in the gallery was two meters wide right so yeah. And that's the, the brilliant thing. It, Bigger by 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 a hun <laughs> by hundreds yeah. of you know like percent, yeah. Well, I, I know I, I have to accept that most people will only ever view my work up to that point on you know mm. a phone screen, which is great because people can zoom in and have a have a look around it. But mm. um, when it's on the wall of the gallery and you, you can stand back and look at it, it's fantastic. So yeah. to know that it was on the wall of the gallery, but the gallery couldn't open there was something quite cold war steve about that that no one could actually go and see it yeah yeah uh, yeah, yeah. the um, only other thing would we've... have been if there'd been a landslip and it would sort of half of it yeah. kind of gone off the wall or something it would have been a very... yeah 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 definitely yeah. but um we we released it again we released it online um and i think you'll you'll get a link for that for the social gathering website and we we, mm. we had some guest writers um contribute to the piece there was um Kit DeWall, who's in the in there, and Joe Lysett wrote a piece, and and, and Jonathan Coe and Poga Caesar contributed as well. So it was a, it, you know, we 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 did a nice piece to go along with it, but um, it was disappointing that that people couldn't go yeah. and see it. No, absolutely. And of course, now that even if we were to reopen, I know the, the new museum's shut at the moment, but it, it will yeah. have a life somewhere. And then, of course, it will. <laughs> and 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 a new life too for sort of the pre-Raphaelite pieces. So. Yeah, so the, um, one of the, Birmingham obviously is, is uh, very famous for its um, collection of, of pre-Raphaelite art, uh, quite rightly, um, and it's an art that I used to go and see with my mom, and we and I mm. fell in love with them. My, my fondness for them waned a bit, I think, to, as I got older. I think I've got rebelled against the, the you know, the tweeness of them and stuff like yeah, that, yeah, but. Yeah. Not without reading, and obviously they're not. There's a lot more to it than that. But I thought, right, let's f up the pre-Raphaelites. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've um, I've put the put them on the bus, which I thought was a West Midlands bus, no less. Yeah, but in a funny way, you've all you've all sort of. I have a I think particularly you know, the last of England, the couple travelling at the front, they have a new poignancy for me. You know, I, yeah, they yeah, did. Uh, yeah. The pre raphaelite same here. As a child, I was super proud of them. I thought they were beautiful, and then I, maybe. You're, you're a bit younger than me, so it's probably, but there was a sort of an intellectual falling out with them the way that there was, I studied drama and then all your 
childhood heroes like your Rafe Richardson's or your Alec Guinness or any of those, their style of acting fell out of favour because it was mannered and it was this and it was that. And, yeah. you know, you, yeah, so there are, but, um, and I have to just point out the, the little bit, bit uh, on the steamed up window, photo montage isn't art. Um, <laughs> is that, th is actually that something that's said to you or is that something that creeps into uh, you? It, it, I mean, it is, it's more, more to do with, um, I don't know, my, my, <laughs> uh, my own kind of uh, inner complexes, I suppose. But yeah, I, yeah. I, I think it's um, an imposter syndrome. But I think it's, it, it, just, it just seems right that, that, you know, I took the... And I wondered what... I was a bit hesitant, really, about taking the um, these, you know, Ford, Ford Maddox brand, uh, mm. Last of England couple, for instance, who I think look great as a surly couple on a bus. Um, mm. That seemed to work quite well. Mm. Um, and I thought that the pre raphaelite Brotherhood would perhaps take exception to to what I'd done with these uh, with these characters. But, yeah, <laughs> but it's nice. Yeah. And, yes. Oh, uh, yeah. And also on another level, they were pioneers in their own time, weren't they? And I actually might yeah, be yeah. welcome that you've refreshed and renewed and recontextualised them. And that was the thing. Yeah, I brought them to uh, a new audience, perhaps. So uh, yeah, yeah. So, anyway. so that was so that also. Um, and for all you budding Cold War Steves out there, yeah, the, B, the BMAG archive. In fact, Linda Spurdle, who's the head of digital from BMAG, was in an earlier Hello Culture um, uh, panel talking about this very initiative. I think one of the a real pioneer, the Birmingham's, Birmingham's Museum is a real pioneer in this area. Uh, but that, so that all took place during lockdown in a way that was envisaged to happen in real life, but then just the digital and the online element just grew, was became more important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they, they were released yeah. online. And again, this, 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 these two pieces of this and, the, and another one that um, uh, were, were hanging um, right. all together in the St. Gallery. I think we have gallery, so. well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so there's a um, very famous one from Birmingham's collection. Yes. Um, Cold War Steve. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. Yes, I, I don't remember the shopping trolley in these. <laughs> I haven't no, I must go back and look. Oh, I don't, I, yeah, the porter cabin was already there, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> marvellous, marvellous. Just, oh. Um, so, um, so having thought that, well, yes, you'd, you'd spent your bile or your ire on Brexit, along comes the pandemic and actually... yeah. Gives you a yes, whole so new set of material. And again, this is, uh, you talked earlier about that previous <clears throat> body of work being about a sort of personal reaction or a coping mechanism, as it were, to the, some of the yeah. anger that you felt. Uh, you know, the, your pandemic work also comes from a similarly personal place, doesn't it? Yes, very much. And like I said before, I, uh, yeah, I was going to perhaps not create as much work for Twitter and because I didn't think the news was going to be um, as it was, but um, the pandemic came, and I was, I was, I, you know, it was clear the government were, were woefully inadequate to deal with this. Um, you know, right from the beginning, when Boris Johnson was was skipping Cobra meetings and going on holiday, and you know, telling people to take it on the chin, and so I knew that that things weren't going to be great. But I was a bit tentative about satirizing stuff. I mean, people were dying, people were scared. And I thought, you know, is it right that I release work related to that? So I was very tentative in my first. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but then the, um, you know, the anger. Um, I've, I've spoken about it before, but my wife's a carer, at, um, a care home for for, for dementia uh, uh, right. residents with dementia, and she was coming home in tears and telling me stories about what was happening. It was stuff that wasn't being covered in the news at that time. So the you yeah. know. She, yeah. transferring patients from hospital with COVID, not being tested and putting them in the home. Um, so obviously the, the, the virus just, just ravaged the home and, and there was deaths pretty much every other day. And, she, and I could see, you know, this was happening, which infuriating. So um, anger is a big yeah. uh, motivating factor for my artwork. And, and people yes. would comment and they said, we know you're angry about this because, you know, I'm releasing two or three pictures a day. Yeah. Um, and it really was just, trying to get get kind of an get all that yeah. yeah yeah and this one obviously is, is Dominic Cummings Dominic Cummings is someone that I'd featured uh for a couple of years before really the pandemic 
you know, this, this unelected person that seemed to have so much power over um, decision making and, and government and, and that just infuriated me. But then obviously when he broke lockdown and, and the excuses that he gave, showing complete contempt for the British public, <laughs> Uh, really just and so you know this is a was, was quite popular at the time I think it struck a chord with a lot of people um, where he's he's urinating on on what he's telling other people to do basically yeah and always and it's uh, and always the humanizing or the commentary presence of Steve McFadden as, as Phil Mitchell there's something about there's something about him being in it that makes, I don't want to say makes it okay. I don't quite mean that, but there's something, I think it's that the common man is it is in everything that you do, isn't it? And that yeah. So it isn't just, uh, it, it doesn't become a sort of, a lot of political cartoons say in, in newspapers, I sometimes strike me as it's all a bit of an insider. It's all an insider thing, isn't it? You then hear that politicians ask for the original and have them framed and put in their toilets so that they, show that they've got you know some sense of humor about themselves yeah but there's something about you can't do that when phil mitchell's there there's something about <laughs> that i don't know what that's about yeah i mean he's it, it, when i began which is why i'm called cold war steve it was it was steve mcfadden in a cold war picture that's that's what my entire output was so it's it is a, a quite a incongruous joke that that ran for a while and then it evolved and, and, yeah. and continues to evolve but I've kept him in and he is yeah he's he's the the every man the every person the moral he's like um, a moral touchstone isn't yeah, he yeah yeah so he's I mean my he, he's me in them really you know he, he will be looking on aghast or or just perplexed or, or angry or bemused yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh my um so yeah, well, we could talk about the pandemic a lot, but yeah, there's so this, you really go to town here, don't you? It's like this. Yeah, I mean, it gets, it, I mean, it's, yeah, and of course, with your, with your connection to a care home, particularly at the beginning, you know, yeah. people have sort of, you a modern day Bruegel, but it, it is very dystopian, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it really is. And, and, um, you know, I wouldn't have, if at the start of the pandemic, I wouldn't have dreamed of doing a picture like this because I would have thought it would have been too insensitive. But, you know, I had to, and there's, there's characters in there that, you know, Mike Ashley from, from Sports Direct, the, the, these millionaires that were, were laying stuff off and it just it brought out the very worst in people that you knew were going <laughs> to be the very worst. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and so I, I, I put them in. To, yeah. And it makes me, it's quite... It's quite demanding doing a piece like this because you you throw yourself in there and it's it's but it is very cathartic because I can stand back and look at them <laughs> in there in the in, in the, their uh, proper setting almost yes, setting. yes yes yeah. yes a sort yeah. of wish fulfillment yeah um so uh, yes the so the pandemic gave you plenty to go on but moving on we have um Cold War Steve meets the outside world so. Yeah. We start to, you know, remember, I, I find it hilarious that the other week I was just saying to my husband, oh, wouldn't it be great if we were in tier two again? It's like, that's my, <laughs> the level of my ambition is that we can meet at, you know, like tier two. Like, yeah, tier two. But, you know, like a lot of the work, a lot of this, the country was, you know, like, except for Leicester, poor old things, and a few of places in the Northwest, a lot of places were in tier two during September and October. So you were in the outside world. So tell us, tell us about that. Yeah, th this was... Um... The filmmaker Kieran Evans, um, we initially started speaking with him to film the You, Me and Cold War Steve exhibition, so travelling around the country visiting people. We, we, we've been in discussion with him about filming that. Um, and then obviously uh, during the lockdown, we thought, well, it'd be a shame, you know, there's something there, maybe we can think of something else. And, and the meeting the outside world is exactly what it is. It's, it's the next step that, that I wanted to do. Um, so it was post first, post lockdown one, <laughs> although there was obviously still restrictions in place. So it was, it was going outside and, um, removing myself from my, you know, I sit on my here in the corner doing my work. Um, yeah. and the interaction I have, obviously I get, get, um, praise and abuse <laughs> in equal measure, but, but obviously, um, here I can just mute someone and not 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 take it too too personally but yeah. obviously going out into the outside world this was going to 
um, bring me face to face with the public and uh, yeah. and it was it was that so it was going out and meeting but also like we said before uh, bringing my art into how I want or I always every picture I do I do them to, to one meter two meter wide pieces it's just that yeah. they're only ever looked at on a phone so yeah 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 so we we found locations and and, yeah, and ideas. So the yeah, the, yeah. Set, the first one was was Medway in Kent, um, mm. very much the belly of the beast in terms of Brexit and and things like that. So this was a it's a beautiful um, country park around the Medway, and we 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 installed uh, these these big pieces, um, you know, in the mud flats and and all around. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And it was a kind of tour you walk around looking at the art and it, it seemed to work really well um and I was going down to look at them for the first time I was I was looking on Twitter and there was all these uh locals saying they were furious that they were having this lefty remainer stuff thrust yeah. down their throat and um I, I have I, an image about that actually yeah Gary. I pulled up there and I was expecting um protesters you know placards and pitchforks and stuff like that but there actually wasn't and everyone was really nice <laughs> um but, but of course yeah but of course that was the thing isn't it there'd be you know was it victoria woodward said there'll be an outrage people will go you know <laughs> yeah and that's uh, it I think. And, and then and they'll do things like write to their local um newspaper write to their and local newspaper. yeah and it is and and you know the because i get so much of it online i think that the people are going to come up to me and say this to my face but they seemingly never do and never will you know they're they're, they're only happy to do that and, and say those things from the the, 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 anim the anonymity of their their, their room yeah. but i mean there were some great ones that someone this is obviously fantastic. ripped yeah. one off and thrown it into the way. <laughs> um yeah yeah i love this i go to the park to escape from things not to have people's political opinions rammed down my throat it's just disgusting it's just i yeah, yeah. i mean that's and, and that's something i was cautious of really i mean they, they were they were only install there were maximum of, of a week they were going to be there anyway these images yeah. so um but but i think a lot of the the, the people that were um uh, annoyed by it actually would never go to that park anyway to be honest with you i think it's just yes. they were kind of they were yeah. kind of jump, jump you did on them a favor by get, yeah, getting them yeah. out there so and they the could be disgusted were, <laughs> the park were great you know they we were invited there because medway uh, believe it or not are, are vying to be the uk capital of culture city of culture even though it's not a city which is bizarre yeah but, they'll do but, like, yeah uh, then now they do these it's a kind of group yeah. and and they were really up for, for me going there and and you know I, they were happy i brought people to the park that wouldn't normally go there and, and all the rest of it but anyway that that was the response <laughs> fantastic fantastic so and, and then also it involved uh, pictures on you know like on beaches so like so, and again back to this scale thing having gone you know, having been, oh, this is Liverpool, but you know, yeah, again, having so there was... you went big in that, you went big in the gallery, you went even bigger outdoors. Yeah, yeah, and that, and that was the whole point. It's, it's whatever you know, the, the the absolute opposite of a mobile phone screen, really. And and mm. so we did the the giant jigsaw, Trumpscape jigsaw in in Liverpool. Yeah. Liverpool, uh, incredible, incredibly supportive city, of course. Um, yeah. Yeah, 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 beautiful location, and everyone was fantastic. Um, yeah that was just amazing to do and and, and see yeah so on that i know when back there obviously uh and just as a side note of course actually when i said i was going to interview cold War, cold War Steve, somebody went oh yeah the jigsaw man <laughs> um and of course that was the other sort of slightly um unexpected thing about lockdown of course is that jigsaws people went mad for jigsaws people went mad yeah um <laughs> And look, we were in the right place at the right time with jigsaws. You know, we yeah. didn't. We, you know, we're not disaster capitalists. We, we, <laughs> we, <laughs> that bloody cold rain probably. Yeah. He probably oh, look at him, the Lisa, that yeah, 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 yeah. He He's probably in. caused the pandemic once Brexit yeah. had happened, just so he could sell some jigsaws. <laughs> yeah, it's a bat. Um, <laughs> he, um, we'd we'd released Hellscape jigsaw um, uh, yeah. just before Christmas, so before there was any any word of pandemic yeah. or anything like that, and and it had proved to be. Uh, yeah, it was really popular, Hellscape Jigsaw. It was even nominated for Design of the Year, believe it or not. And um, it seemed to capture people's imagination. Yeah. So when lockdown came in and everyone was buying jigsaws, there was an uptake in, in uh, Hellscape yeah. sales. And 
the jigsaw manufacturers in Devon asked if we wanted to do some more. So we, we obliged and, and it's quite difficult to get them out because there was a jigsaw shortage, national jigsaw <laughs> shortage. Like, like with toilet roll, what was yeah, it? Yeah, 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 uh, uh, with toilet so roll. The, so the manufacturing capability for jigsaws rather yeah, than... Yeah, so like, like, you know, the cardboard and, and what, what you yeah. know, whatever they need. So there was, it was yeah. quite a, and they did a really great job and we, we released that. We did, the first jigsaw we released in, lockdown was actually a positive one I thought maybe we need a, a, yeah. a positive one so, I, so yeah. I released the positive one and then and then you know the more sort of dystopian but it's the feedback from people that that complete them is, is brilliant you know they've got the I put adequate family fun which is a bit yeah. of tongue but it really is you've got yeah. uh, pictures of you know a grandmother saying oh I found Trump's ass and uh yeah, yeah. you know piece her and, and and things like that so it's, yeah 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 no, I know. I just I I love that idea. Yeah. So um, but anyway, so you but but now you're on beaches and it's you know we, yeah before we were all stuck inside doing jigsaws when we could get out these very large scale pieces now were. So this was this the is, biggest that yeah. I'll ever do, probably a, a, a thirty meter wide um, windbreak on Boscombe Beach. Yeah. In Bournemouth, so it's a beach. Um, I'd featured Bournemouth. Uh, beach in in other pieces that I'd done um and so I thought it only right that that I return that again and yeah. and obviously a wind break um and it was to be one side um would be a a positive side um yeah. a, a Britain that I like and would like to return to so the one side is very welcoming it's got yeah. people from the kinder transport you know when when we welcome thousands of, of Jewish children and, and help them escape certain certain death um and just lots of positive people there yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. you know the Malala, one has got lots see. of um you know all the, the food and culture and everything that's 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 yeah. that's great about britain and then the opposite side was going to be what i thought to be the the uh the the, the dark underbelly, underbelly so to speak yeah. of of, yeah. of of that side so it is is it's it's something that that yeah you know brexit and the government's response to covid were were mm. angering me but the seemingly the rise in in far right um, sensibilities and 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 almost since the Brexit vote and and since the the Trump administration, it's almost like they they feel that they've got a, a it's it's almost legitimised their their right to 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 be racist to be yeah. to blame um, migrants for for their troubles. You know, it's not yeah. you know the reason their their wages are low is that. Polish family down the road. It's it's nothing to do with the, the you know the managers or the government or anything. Or like the global economy or the global economy. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this yeah. side was a, a very much, and it is one piece. So you've got the positive side and this side, yeah. and you can't have one without the other. That's the complete artwork. But um, Bournemouth council, uh, one council leader who was an interim leader, decided that this side shouldn't be shown. So I'm pictured there in front of it, but. You know, the very next minute we had to cover it up in black plastic. Um, it was it was deemed. He said that the the people of Bournemouth shouldn't be seeing that. So that was an un undemocratic decision from him, um, and it was covered up. He said it wasn't censored, but I mean, you can't get more I censored think that's, than that. I, say, <laughs> I think isn't that covering something up with black is the definition yeah, of censorship? That's, you know, I can't. Yeah. Well, what is it? You know, it's uh, and yeah. everyone. You know who went past and we spoke to people of Bournemouth just were saying, look, this is insane. You know, even if we don't agree with what, what you're saying on there, you should still be allowed to say, to say it. it. And, and the people that had such a problem with it are usually the first that, that would say about free speech. And it, it's just almost like you, they want free speech to be to spout racism or misinformation, but you yeah. can't challenge that, you know, then, yeah. then you haven't. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. So it's, it's a, incredibly yeah. frustrating. Yeah. time and, and I thought maybe we shouldn't show it we shouldn't erect it at all um but so much work had gone into it and and actually the outcome of it was I think more people saw the the forbidden yeah. side because it, people it, natural instinct is to want to know what's behind the black plastic isn't it so um and and the, it was released on BBC news and stuff like that the actual full uncensored version so yeah so. Yeah, in a funny way, it probably got more coverage than yeah, yeah. Had it not been. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, there was a Sky documentary. You were out amongst the people. People on the whole were very nice. Uh, but now we move. Uh, we move to the um, 
was quite late, well, the end of 2020. Uh, and uh, global events started to shift. There's a, you know, we're in a new era. The... Yeah, so it was beginning and, and I, I, there was news. Um, so this was just obviously my reaction to um, the personally wonderful news that, that Trump had yeah. been voted out, even though he won massively. Bigly. Well, Bigly, <laughs> one bigly. Um, so I've, I mean, this is just another a piece where uh, they're, they're, you know, the usual wrecking crew who yeah. who uh, pinned all their money on Trump and and yeah. um, never challenged him or in what he said. Um, we're now going to be um, sort of crawling to to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, and maybe they would not forget what they had actually done instead. Which, well, certainly so far, it appears to be the case, isn't it? Mm. Actually, it was, I won by a lot. That was his I won by a lot. Yeah, that's it. I won by a lot. So, uh, anyway. <laughs> Again, Trump was, uh, a lot of my stuff is based on British politics and stuff, but Trump was the gift that kept on giving, really. <laughs> <laughs> no, how could you ignore him? Yes, right, absolutely. right to the end. He, he's, he's just um, um, staggering. And... Um, uh, and so, yes, and so there's I think another, another image kind of brings us pretty much up to date because I'm conscious we need to go to time. Yeah. Yes, then. Yeah, so this is just an end one, just to end on a, on a, on a high almost. Uh, he's gone. There's hope perhaps that, that um, you know, the, the, the darker side of my Bournemouth um, piece maybe can be, you know, yeah. shed light on perhaps and, and remove now that this toxic creature's um, yeah. not in power anymore, but, but um, <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. So um, just to mark the transition uh, between, uh, thank you so much for that. It's been a really fantastic sort of canter through, uh, gosh, it's an, 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 just a year. It just seems so much. But um, we're going to just play a very quick video, which is actually the death of 2020. It seemed a very... Um, uh, appropriate uh, uh, way to mark that. Uh, I think questions are coming in, but just a reminder that we are taking questions and you can put those in the Q&A section. I think I have noticed as we've gone, some of them have got answered as we've gone, but if you've got more or new questions. So um, just while we uh, watch the death of 2020, we'll then come back to your Q&A. So Gareth, we can cue yes. that up. Thanks, thanks for that. Um, so um, I get fed the questions in a, uh, in a, in a way, although they're, yes, they're just coming. Uh, but I think you've sort of mentioned that a lot of this comes from your anger. Um, can you task, um, can you think in terms of the protest, uh, it's two things I think, it's like, can you, can you 
what's the thinking and practice behind it? Is it is it kind of a you see a piece of you say you see Dominic coming saying something ridiculous about you know testing his eyes on the way to Castle Barnard, and is your response a more sort of almost like a gut one, or do you see or do you see images and you go yeah it's that or how does so so, so how does that sort of go? It's a, mi a mixture, and, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it is an initial um, uh, gut reaction and a gut anger. And I think, right, I've got to do something about that. Um, and then I've got lots of, you know, I'll sit and sketch and get lots, pull lots of images in and things like that. Or it could be um, someone like Jacob Rees Mogg will recline on the bench in the House of Commons. Yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, people will send me that thousands of times. So you've got to do something with this. It's different, really. But it is just just hearing the news, seeing the news and, um, you know, reacting. And the thing, the good, the positive thing that I do is that I can react to a news piece almost instantly. So um, yeah. with the, 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 um, the capital um, invasion by the, the pro-Trump people, I was actually able to post post um work about that as it unfolded yeah like in real time uh, yeah yeah in real time so before cartoonists would have obviously had to do the piece it would have gone to print and it would have been would have been after, and by that time yeah. who know you know so much news would have happened between then and now so it's it, it's very reactive i think which, which yeah which is, which and, is and so so some of the so obviously the big pieces you know with masses of elements and masses of composition and all sorts of decisions to be made that that might take quite longer but given that you have an almost daily output Mm. are things relatively so those things i'm happening i'm guessing happen relatively quickly they pull together quite yeah almost so, like in, I'm, I'm guessing almost like instinctively or yeah fairly instinctively and it, it would be you know i've got to there's there's time involved because i have to buy image rights and things like that so it's quite expensive yeah. and, and planning and things like that so so in on one hand lockdown has been good in that i've got lots of time to do the work you know I, I used mm. to travel a lot to, to London and what have you um but then on the other side I've got three children who are homeschooling so it's it's, yeah, 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 yeah. it's, a, it's a bloody nightmare to, <laughs> to try and get it all to juggle oh, it all but yeah and that sort of leads me to my second because actually dealing so uh, does the fact that you can express your anger and your frustration through your artwork does that become a sort of sort of self-care or do you sometimes have to go you know what I've got to step away from the screen I've got to step away from news media like how do you balance how do you achieve that yeah balance? It, it, uh, that self-care it's very trendy yeah, to say but you know no no it is and and um you know firstly I feel very fortunate that I'm now in a position that I can channel this this emotion into to something that that people will will look at and that's why I love my audience on 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 Twitter because um you know, it feels like a quite a, a, a nice uh, group or, or club of people that that are like minded and, and you know, comments that I love are, are that people don't feel alone in the way that they feel because they might yeah. they might see they see the news, a lot of which is, is, you know, especially from right wing media, they're not seeing a lot of stuff that they, they they're, mm. they're thinking is wrong. And, and so it's it's, you know, I release a piece and, and they can identify with that and then there'll be comments and other comments and people sort of come together and, and share in their in their despair yeah <laughs> almost yeah. so but that but, uh, but does that and so that helps rather than that helps yeah definitely because it's uh you know it's a, a constant support although there are negative yeah. comments which I felt I found really difficult at first but now I'm able to, to, to kind of ignore them but but the the the, the con so we're all isolated at home on our own or with our families and we can't go out but but we can come together in in the comments section underneath my piece and yeah. I've always said that the, the comments bit is as equally as important as the actual piece yes yeah. well it's a bit like that yes it's like the two sides of your piece in Bournemouth isn't it yeah almost? yeah the comments are you know people's yeah. uh interpret you know I never title a piece I never name a piece I always just put it out there because uh my audience are actually much better at naming a piece or <laughs> than i would be and yeah, it's yeah. just great that people interpret different uh sections of it and and, and it's just mm. a really in, a, a nice place to be and and discuss what's what's going on at the moment really yeah um actually i'm going to take uh, slightly out of order because you mentioned it earlier about having to buy rights i've got two quick a question here 
Uh, Jazz Morton. Hello, Jazz. She's a, a participant on the leadership post that Lara and I do. Uh, Hello, Jazz. How do you get the rights to use other people's photos, images of your work? And I'll, I'll just couple it with this other question. Um, and uh, Chris, have you ever had to deal with copyright or other intellectual property issues? Or do owners tend to be okay with things like small samples in music? I imagine you buy photo licenses all the time, of course. Well, you actually mentioned that a lot of your time is spent sourcing rights. Yeah. Um, yeah. So my guess is, as a professional, you're not taking any risks with anything, but I don't want to answer the question for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, at the beginning, I just used to use whatever because I was, I was unknown. And then it, it, I, I got my first book that I ever released with, with Thames and Hudson they were all pieces that I'd made on my phone and there was no I didn't get cut yeah you know, didn't buy image rights or anything like that so it was a really scary time uh because it was just completely new to me that, that, but that, Thames that. And Hudson, what did Thames and Hudson go oh you haven't got oh no, no we'll wing it <laughs> they were they were you know, yeah it was it was it was odd um I've used a lot of Martin Parr photos for that book right. and um and I was just thinking, he's going to hate me. He's going to sue me. And, and someone yeah. had highlighted this to him. And I thought, um, and then I got a, a message and I opened it from Martin Parr. And I was like, oh, God. And he just said, oh, I love it. Can I have copies of the print? It's great. And I was like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but that but, could have gone either way. You know, oh, he would have been within his rights. I'm not oh, saying, uh, yeah, you know, like, yeah. it's, it's, it's great it's, it's a difficult it's an area that, that you know costs me a lot of money to i'll buy you know each background that i use i, I buy the the Im image rights for that and oh so no uh, wonder you were pleased with being mac when it we were all royalty free yeah oh, yeah God, well that's good. it and and the reason i use a lot of um historical art backgrounds is, is because they're they're obviously public domain indeed <laughs> Yes, but then the individual it's, it's a difficult area because there is actually a it, it enshrined in EU EU law, believe it or not, um, the um, parody pastiche exemption. So if you're using a photo or a piece of art to create another piece of art, yeah, that's a parody or a pastiche, then it's permissible. But I yeah. that is a that's something that I can fall back on. But I don't. I'd rather rather than annoy photographers and, and things like that. I'd rather you know. Well, in the same um, way that. Yeah, and but that, that because what goes around comes around because actually somebody did a rip off jigsaw. Yeah. yeah, so we had um, Chinese made jigsaws, trumpscapes, things like that that we saw on Amazon. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so it, you know that's it you, is. Yeah, well, it, what goes around comes around. Yeah, I but then I, I, you know, I'm quite free, and in, in people will will share pictures that I've done without crediting me, and people always say, "Oh, you should credit us," but I'm not. I'm not. That doesn't bother me at all, to be honest with you. Um, they're not making money from it or anything and it's it's getting the image and the message across to other people so yeah. that, that's not something that that, that bothers mm -hmm. me really but um but yeah i mean it's a big big a big area that's that, yeah. you know i i have to spend money quite a lot of money on the image rights and uh a, a intellectual property right lawyer as well just to yeah well because you're a professional <laughs> well, you're a professional now isn't yeah you know, i know understand earlier it might have been more of a hobby thing yeah okay. um so uh, what do you think, so from Sue Cook, what do you think it is about collage that makes it work so well and have such a rich history for satire and political activism? It says here, I'm thinking Russian constructivists, John Hartfield, etc. Do you see your work as part of that tradition? Um, yeah, I mean, John Hartfield... Um... I was, I'd not been all that familiar with his work till I did um, a, a, a commission for um, the Scottish National uh, Modern and they had a history of collage uh, and they had a selection of, of John Hartfields and I was just uh, completely staggered by them. So he was making protest um, photo montages against Hitler, against fascism, actually in fascist, yeah, Nazi Germany. So, I mean, he was, he was on the, the Gestapo's most wanted list and all the rest of it. So, um, you know, I wouldn't compare what I do in any way to to what in the kitchen in Birmingham you know. on an iPhone. <laughs> yeah, I mean the worst the worst that would happen to me is I get sued or or, or yeah suspended. Well, you know, or the you know, or the Kent Medway or the Kent or... Medway News would say that's the the and half naked Boris Johnson next to a field of dead bodies is the last thing I need to see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. to uh, turn to Sue's question, it's yeah, that, yeah, massively inspired by that, and and also I think collage. Um, 
especially what I do photo montage, there's a there's a uh, an unreal surrealness to it, but also yeah. a very real element. So yeah. so it's it's not like a cutting. You know, I've got actual people's faces there, um, albeit in a surreal sort of background. But but there's something very immediate to it. So I think people are yeah. scrolling through Twitter and things like that. Yeah. And, and hopefully would, would, my piece would, would, would stand out because there's elements that are, are super real, elements that are, yeah. aren't, aren't so real. So it is a, 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 a great um, form to do and very therapeutic to create them as well, I would yeah. say. It's, it's yeah. um, you know, even if I wasn't, didn't have an audience, I think I would still really enjoy. Well, uh, that was, uh, that links to the, my next question from Mark Murphy. Um, which are you the Mark Murphy I think you are in which says, hello. Um, were you always into collage um, art and artists or has that been a sort of that's that's because I, I, I understand that you you studied art, you know, and then you kind of went away from it and you came back. But was that your chosen art form, you know, as a as a student as well? Or has that just come out more since Cold War Steve because of this, you know, this affiliation with with parody, pastiche and, and protest? Yeah, um, I've, my main art point was was cartooning really I think um, when I was at art college and I was making um, I was using photo montage then in my my cartoons so I'd take a, a, a photo of someone's head and then draw bits of, you know, so it's, it's, it's something that I've always done and then didn't do and it was almost I had to wait for the right time really in, in terms of the technology and the the, the, the the gallery space to put it so along came fairly cheap cut and paste apps um, that, that you could use on your phone um, and obviously Twitter somewhere to share it so it's 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 you know right time right place really and yeah yeah it's just, sort of it's coalescence just, of a number of yeah because yeah. if I was doing my cartoons and photo montages mm -hmm. with glue and stuff like that no one would be the slightest bit interested in them. Well, I think <laughs> about now one. you'd be going, I've got one about the about the referendum results. Clues <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, just dry. Yeah, yeah. So no, no one would, would see them and, and no one would, you know, I could send the submissions into some publication or something for them to consider, but it just wouldn't wouldn't get anywhere. And that's the 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 good it, uh, Twitter is a toxic place, it has very negatives, but all but it also it has an opportunity for, for for people to very much like the it, I liken it to the the punk DIY. Yeah, no, um, absolutely. Yeah. In that, in the you know, there was all in the seventies. There was a lot of prog rock, and I love prog rock. But a lot of this kind of uh, musicianship and noodling. Then all of a sudden, people said, "Right, I can do that." Yeah. You know, and and that's very much what I started doing was was right. I you know I can do this. Cut, um, fairly crude cut and paste and I can release it um, yeah. and and it, it, it got a, a fantastic response. Um, there was in fact I was just trying yes, Nick Robertson Nick Robertson who spoke at a previous Hello Culture called called social media platforms um, open mic night he said they're just you know like it's, it's the equivalent of an open yes. mic yes yeah yeah that's you a know, good it's like good you point. just yeah. you put yourself out and um, so but my, this is my last question uh, but I it's from someone who calls themselves anonymous and I, I'm going to read it out verbatim because there's something really, okay. have you got an, um, have you got an actual background in art at all? I loved actual background. Actual. Have you got an actual background in art at all? Um, and I, I guess we've sort of, we're going to go back because actually you did, you went, you haven't. Yeah. I mean, art, I've always loved art. It was, it was the one thing I was probably really good at. Uh, went to art college um, and did good at art college but then um i was in a band and just messed around and and, and ended up just having to take any jobs that i could so i, I, I think the transition but, i think but, one of the hardest yeah the transition from art school or art college to, to making your some, way yeah. as an artist is, is one of the uh, no disrespect to our august bodies but they really it, it seems to be the thing that a lot of art students massively struggle with yeah we have got one last question because um uh oh where's to pack oh actually what one of our favorite I'll, I'll use it my it'll be this is my penultimate question frey bentos fan or not <laughs> um <laughs> i frey bentos this this i used frey bentos when they did back in the 2016 I think it was or whenever when mm. they told us that, that that we would have adequate food 
post right, uh, yeah, Brexit yeah. And, and that I've ripped the piss out of Frey Bentos but as my dad keeps reminding me we had them at least once or twice a week when we were growing up <laughs> between the, the family the the they're the actually pies very tasty surprisingly nice. <laughs> I love if you cook it right if you can get it open first of all that's the yeah, thing yeah, but the, yeah. but the I love the 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 under the crust the the pastry at the top you get this kind of flabby yeah yes like gravy soaked Ooh, it's very nice gravy yes and in fact, you won't get any meat of, in it. <laughs> if you're a fan of Barbara Nice, if she does her raffle and oh, there's a flavor, right, yeah. the two things that, like pre pandemic, the two things that people, I have seen people fight over are the Frey Bentos pie and the big bottle of Dettol. It's like I saw <laughs> two women in a, like having a proper elbow about it. Anyway, last question. Um, are there any subjects that would be no go areas for you? Uh, yeah, um, yeah, probably anything re related to sort of child abuse and things like that. You know, it's just not. Yeah. And there's people that I, you know, are there, is there anyone I won't use? You know, I use some pretty despicable characters in 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 my yeah. work to to bring home the point. And I'm, I'm I don't use them lightly, but I would never. I don't use. Uh, I don't even want to say a name. K. Hopkins. Um, mm simply because they're just such hateful, attention-seeking people that they, that they get that, enough. That somehow rewards them. Yeah. Putting, yeah. When, putting in something of yours would almost reward them. Yeah. It be the sort of thing they're looking for. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I, I, yeah. I tend not to. But Don't that's, feed that's, the beast in that regard. Yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. I'm really sorry. We're com we are out of time. Um, oh. It's been so great to speak to you, though, and, and thank you uh, so much. Really enjoyed um, it. Thank you. And thank you to everyone for the questions yeah. and for, for, for watching. Um, thank you all for your questions. I um, I just have a couple, if you can bear with me for literally, I've got, I think, t two minutes just to wrap this up. But I just wanted to thank Lara and Chris, who are the curators for Hello Culture and BBC Academy. And this is part of the Digital Cities virtual programme. So make sure you check out the rest of the Digital Cities virtual website for information. Um, there's other masterclasses happening in the week. There's been online. Uh, the whole thing's been really informative and fantastic, particularly if you're interested in pursuing some sort of media-based or broadcast career. Uh, this is not quite the end of this Hello Culture series. There's more Hello Culture at lunchtime today. Uh, we have uh, continue our theme of protest. Javad Alipour, Amara Spence, Stella Kanu, and Michael Jen Jenkins will explore how digital platforms have enabled protest and actors' vision during lockdown. It is fully booked, but uh, again, keep your eye out for this on the website. Um, as I mentioned, that next panel is the last Hello Culture for this edition. There's been six months of really amazing content. Uh, check it out on the website if you haven't seen it already. But um, keep an eye out because we may have a little extra Hello Culture bonus edition at the end of April, but uh, it's all a little bit under wraps now. But for now, a huge thanks to Lara Ratnaraja, who I mentioned earlier, my partner in crime in many uh, endeavours, uh, who curates this programme with Chris Brown. Uh, a massive thanks to the whole series has been produced brilliantly by Shirley, the script starts on page five, Brown, Benson, and um, Shirley Benson, our fantastic producer. Gareth has been uh, the tech producer and made it all look really great, queued, queued in things. And Wendy Osmond from Subtext Live has provided captions. So I really hope you've appreciated those. Um, none of this would happen without Arts Council England, who has funded Hello Culture, as well as the BBC Academy, because of its uh, part of Digital Cities programme. Um, Cold War Steve, it's been tremendous to meet you. Real pleasure. Um, Thank you. I don't think I can look at a sandworm again without imagining Farage's <laughs> capped head uh, emerging from it. So, you know, uh, thanks for that. Uh, Thank you. That's it for all of us. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for spending your time. And I hope you found it as an enjoyable and uh, just eye opening as I have. Um, you've been a great virtual audience and enjoy the rest of your day. Those of you who are going on to the next panel. Uh, have a really great, uh, you know, I hope that's really fantastic. And all of you have a great afternoon and evening ahead. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.